1.1j, whole numbers and decimals, dividing decimals. When we're dividing numbers that have decimals, we need to remember that there are no decimals in the divisor. or the front. What we must do to fix a number if it does have a decimal in the divisor or the front number is we must move the decimal in both the dividend and the divisor. If you run out of digits while doing the long division, meaning there are no more numbers to carry down, we will need to be adding zeros to the number inside. The reason you add zeros is because we do not want a remainder. When we go to place the decimal in the answer, you will move the decimal straight Here is example one. In, an, in example one, remember the second number, or the number on the bottom in the case of a fraction, is the number we will be placing out front. This number is known as the divisor. Since we cannot have decimals in the divisor, before beginning, we must move the decimal in both numbers. We start by moving the decimal in the number that is the divisor or the number that is going to go out front in our long division. This means we move the decimal in the 2.4 first. When we move the decimal one spot, we now get the number 24. On the top, we do not move the decimal all the way to the end, but we move it the same number of places we moved it in the denominator. This means we also move it one place value. This makes the new numerator 25.68. We now are being asked what is 25.68 divided by 24. This means that we put the 24 out front since it is the second number. We then place 25.68 inside. We can now start the long division. We ask how many times does 24 go into 25? This answer is 1. 1 times 24 is 24. We now subtract, giving us a 1. Now, we must do just as we did with whole numbers and bring the next number down. This gives us 16. We now ask, how many times does 24 go into 16? Since 16 is smaller than 24, it goes into it zero times. We now have zero times 24, which is zero. When we subtract, we get 16. We must now bring down the next digit. When we bring down the next digit, we get a new number of 168. We now must ask, how many times does 24 go into 168? Since this is not a nice even number, we can estimate by saying if this 24 is approximately 25 
and I know that 25, there are four of them in 100, I know there's at least four times that it goes into this number. Since it is very close to 75 for the second portion, this would mean that 24 would go in three additional times. So we can approximate that 24 should go into 168 seven times. We then multiply to see if this is true. Seven times four is 28. Seven times two is 14, plus two is 16. It happens that 24 times seven is exactly 168. So when subtracting, we get a zero. When we have reached a point where we have gotten a zero, we know that our division has been completed. We now must decide where the decimal goes in our answer. Remember, the decimal is placed straight up from its location. If we look at the number inside, we move the decimal straight up, and the decimal goes after the one. This means our answer is 1.07. In example two, we have another division problem. It is 19.5 divided by 25. Remember, we cannot have decimals in the divisor or the number that will be going in front. If we look at this example, the second number will be the number going in front. Since it does not have a decimal point, we can go straight to the long division problem without moving any decimals. This means that we can write 25 out front. We write the long division symbol and we place 19.5 inside. We now proceed to do the division in which we ask how many times does 25 go into one, which it is not possible. So then we move on to how many times does 25 go into 19, which is also not possible. So we further ask how many times does 25 go into 195. Once again, an estimation is helpful here. And since I know there are four 25s in 100, and an additional three 25s make 75, that would mean that seven 25s would make 175. Therefore, I will approximate that 25 will go into 195 approximately seven times. Seven times 125 is therefore 175. We now subtract, giving us 20. As you can see, we did not get a remainder of zero, and when doing division with decimals, we do not want to write a remainder. Instead, we want to continue dividing until we get a remainder of zero. This means that we may need to add a zero at the end of the problem and then bring it down. We can now see that we have the number 200. We now can ask how many times does 25 go into 200? And it goes in eight times to make exactly 200. When we subtract, we now get a remainder of zero. Since we have achieved a remainder of zero, we know that we have completed the problem. We now must assess where we put decimal and we do so by bringing it straight up and placing it in front of the seven. Since there is no number in front of the decimal, a zero is placed there. Our answer therefore is 0 0.78. Remember when using decimals that there can be no decimals in the divisor or front number and that you must move the decimal in both the divisor and the dividend. If you run out of digits, as we did in example two, you just need to add zeros.